Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming along. This is our fifth um, engaging the very inspired CPD session. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the flipped classroom. Um, I'm talking in a kind of presentation way because I'm recording what I'm saying tonight. Um, so those colleagues that weren't able to join the 50 of you that are here will be able to uh, catch up online afterwards. Um, so the flipped classroom, um, what's it all about and um, why have I chosen to speak about it? Well, tonight I'm going to focus on three things. I'm going to focus on the what, the why, and finally the how. And I suppose the first thing I want to say about the flipped classroom tonight is that it's all about perception. You know, the image there, you may see different things at different times you look at it, and there's, there's lots of images that are like that, isn't there? And um, in terms of what the flipped classroom is all about, it's like a lot of things in teaching. It's up to your own professional judgment to what the flipped classroom means to you. Um, I'm going to show you some various examples that I found across the internet tonight. Um, I'm also going to share with you an example of my own practice from before half term when I was working in a year two class. Um, but essentially, you know, you take from it tonight what you want and you, you, you use it and you make it your own because I think that's what it's all about ultimately and that's what teaching is all about. It's all about making it your own, it's all about being unique, being creative um, and you know, however you look at it tonight, you know, there's the 50 people that are in this room, they'll all look at it very differently and all take on board something different. So um, let's just share with, to start off um, one person's perception, this is a video um, from America, a lot of the videos I'm going to show tonight from America, flip classroom seems to be a big term out there at the moment. Um, that they've sort of embraced, um, particularly at the higher end of so their secondary system, really. And um, they're doing a lot of it. Um, and this is this is the first video. I've been teaching math for the last five years, and this is why I flipped my classroom. This is what my classroom used to look like. I was teaching to the middle group of the class. The students that could follow along with what we were doing and we were going through the content. While I had a group of higher level students, not challenged, bored with the information, ready to move forward. And I had a struggling group of students that were not receiving enough effective remediation. They didn't have the basic content they needed to be working on the content we were currently covering. Or they needed more help in order to be successful. This led to a 90% use of class time being spent on delivery and review of content. 90% of the time I was at the front of the classroom lecturing to a group of students and I wasn't meeting all of their needs. 10% of class time was actually spent on application, which led to depending on students to do the application needed to be successful. They had to go home or outside of class and work on applying the concepts that I was giving out in class. This constant battle of not reaching the needs of all students and feeling the need to differentiate for all of my learners let the teacher allows teachers to feel overwhelmed and ineffective because we see the need for differentiation, but there's just not enough time for effective differentiation. This called for a drastic change in how we teach. This is where flipping the classroom comes in. Now the students outside of class preload the content. They get the information they're going to need for class. They can pause, rewind, and rewatch the videos as many times as they need to. They can post questions online to their classmates or to the teacher. And it's a self-paced program where they can be remediated by going back and reviewing former topics, or they can work ahead when they've already mastered a concept and are ready to look forward. They get the content here before class so that when they come into class, my whole classroom has now shifted, where I'm at the center of the class, working between these differentiated groups, focused on different pieces of application. I can now work between each of these groups that are moving at their own pace. This has created a 90% use of class time spent on application of the content, and 10% of class time is spent on delivery of content, when I can answer questions that have been posted, or take any other questions that have come up from applying the content. Now in my classroom, all students are engaged and challenged. I have time to work with each group, give them individualized time and instruction as they need, and I can actually 
work between each of the groups to provide effective differentiation for all my varied groups of learners, my struggling students, my middle group of learners, and I can now extend and expand on my higher level students' prior knowledge and challenge them in, in the classroom. To learn more about flipping the classroom, visit the Friday Institute's website. The, the, um, the idea of working in the groups as well include competition, so that if you haven't done the homework, mm -hmm. you're behind and you're not clued up with what yeah. everybody else is up to. Oh, definitely. I think and then that competition then breeds the onus to... Yeah, and I think we'll, we'll go on and talk about those children that don't have access, or those children that um, have just not watched the videos, and what you do then. And I think, you know, actually, they're not going to lose out on the content because still, you can you can sit in front of a computer or you can sit them with their own device in the lesson to watch the content they're actually going to miss out on the bit that's the exciting that's bit of the application in like class, in your class they're going to miss out on the making bit kind of thing and actually they, they want to do that bit so they're going to do the they're going to do the full the foreground work really um, on that let's let's just have a look at another example <laughs> I'm Aaron Sams and I teach science here at Wilder Park High School. My ultimate goal, I guess, as a teacher is to help students become learners who can learn for themselves and by themselves. One of the problems that I was guilty of even prior to flipping my classroom around was the classroom was centered around me. I told them exactly what to learn, how to learn it, what assignments to do to learn it, and when to learn it, and how to prove to me that they learned it. I don't do that anymore. We changed the place in which content is delivered. Instead of standing in front of a class and delivering, here's how you do this type of problem, here's how this works, um, I deliver that direct instruction now asynchronously at home through these videos that we make with Camtasia Studio. Times till home. Oh, we didn't do that last step. Last step, they were already whole numbers. We had one, one, and four. Yeah. Here we don't have a whole number. So here's a few little tricks when you need to multiply by whole numbers. If one of your numbers ends in 0.5, you're going to multiply by 2. Right. Something 0.5 times it by 2. Right. Okay. Write this down, guys. Yes. If something ends in 0.3 or 0.33 or 0.66, you multiply by 3. And when the kids come to class, they don't show up to learn new stuff. They show up to apply the, the things that they learn at home and to ask me questions about the things they learn at home. So now they can have my, my lesson, if you will, what I would normally have stood up and lectured to them in class with some added features they get that at home, then what they were expected to do for uh, for homework is now what they do in my class. Life is different for me because I don't I no longer am the guy who stands up in the front of the classroom and just yaks at a student for an hour or what however long the class is. Now I walk around the, the class and I help kids. I, I'm a tutor, I'm a guide, I'm uh, the putter outer of fires, whatever it happens to be um, in my crazy chemistry class, I walk around and do that. I don't stand up front and teach on the kind of a traditional model. I'm Aaron Sams, I'm a teacher, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and I love Camtasia Studio. I think um, the important thing to say here though is that you know these these are one way that people are looking at a kind of flipped classroom model and, and the tools I'm going to show you at the end of how to create videos and different things like that don't necessarily need to be used in a flipped classroom context, they can be used for any sort of video recording, sharing the information context. And I think it's important that you take things on board that of the, just to see what people have done, but then make it your own and see and explore really the concept. Um, and that's very much the position I was in last year. And I, I, I looked at this and I thought, how can I how can I apply this with my children? And I was working in a class of six and seven year olds. It's a very different environment and um, this video now just shows a few examples of things that I did last year and into this year um, before I started IPACA. Um, as with anything in teaching, the flipped classroom is something you have to make your own. It's about you using your professional judgement to explore when's best to use it, when's best not to. It's not something you can use all the time, but it's something that can really enhance your teaching and ultimately the learning in your classroom. Um, I just want to share with you now a couple of examples from my own practice before half term um, of how I used a kind of flipped classroom model but with my own twist. Um, so this was an entry from my year two class blog and um, for those of you who don't know I was a year two class teacher before half term in the Prince of Wales School in Dorchester and here you can see 
that um, I've put a message out to parents that they can listen to and watch with their children what we did in that lesson today. So, um, this is actually open in a different tab, so if I click across, this was the video that was made. So, it's a bit of a pentagon group today, we've been looking at having three digit numbers. And we are exploring what happens when you have to carry over a number. And what I'm going to do is, I'm sitting here with all of you two, we've got to say hello you two. Hi. And I'm just going to give a live demonstration of how we answer one of these questions. Uh, and then you two, I'm going to put this up on the blog later. So that when you're at home, you can have a look again. So what I'm going to answer, do is answer our final question. And our final question today for the children in Hexagon and Pentagon group was question number four. And it was, what is 618 at 134? And what we decided we needed to do is we needed to write, draw out our hundreds, our tens and our units column, and we needed to put the numbers into those columns. So, we and of course, I go on, I go through, and I answer the question and I explain it. So, can we all? The really important thing about this was is that I was targeting at the higher end of my group, and but it was open to everyone. At the end of the day, people could go home, they could watch the video, the video and they could explore the concepts. So you would have children that wouldn't necessarily be doing these things in class because they had to, to reinforce something, but being able to go home and to explore that with their parents, go into it more. And I think you know that, that that's something that's really exciting. It's something that we can all all have a go at, really. And that video was made using ScreenChomp. I'm going to show you that bit, how to use ScreenChomp again a little later on. Um, but here's another example of um, a ScreenChomp video. This was made by a GDP that was in my class. Um, in October. child voices coming through and I think that's where I think the flipped classroom has even more potential and um, yes you can deliver the your normal lecture style teaching you know outside of the class like some of the videos we just watched but it's so powerful when we get the children making the videos when the children flip the classroom and they take control um, and here's some examples um, where that's been done with me before um, this is our digital leader blog from the Prince of Wales School and this was the challenge that I set the children Okay, good afternoon everyone. I'm here with the... Uh, Digital Leaders! And we've come up with this really cool idea this week, which is what we're going to make. What are we going to make? Who can remember? Help videos. No, not that. Help videos. Help videos. We're going to make help videos to help show people um, how to do certain jobs in school on the internet. Um, so we might be looking at our school website perhaps. Um, showing how to write comments on Mr. Farrington's blog or one of the school blogs. We might be talking a bit about Merlin or showing off our links pages or even showing people how to get onto the school calendar. But we're going to do that um, at home. We're going to make the videos using this website called screencastomatic.com. Um, we're looking forward to seeing the videos and we really hope that you enjoy using them. Okay, so I made that video, I put it onto the blog. And I sent every child home with a little link off to the blog, and these are the responses I have back. This is Oliver at home. Hello, Oliver. I'm going to show you how to go on the spelling 
to Oliver goes through and he shares things. We had um, another video from Oliver. We had another girl in year two. These are all children that are from reception through to year four. This was a year one video. Hi, my name's Georgia. Today I'm going to show you how you got to Purple Mash. Georgia goes through and shows everyone how she gets into Purple Mash. Um, this is a good year two people sharing Education City. This is a year two people. Then you click enter. And it obviously goes on. So you can see there's real power in this. Um, that's something that I'm very excited about. A good exa another example is the DAS Maths website. The DAS Maths website was put together by the DAS Maths Coordinator Group and includes links off to useful publication, help sheets of parents, useful websites, etc. But it also includes a section here on video files. The web address for this is www.dasp.org.uk forward slash DASP Maths. So we click video files, you'll see that there is a huge selection um, showing how to an agreed way of how addition, subtraction, multiplication, division is calculated at different ages. So this means that children right across Dorchester are doing the same things. Obviously, there's nothing stopping anyone else going in to look at this. So if we wanted to look at year two multiplication using number line, we can just click on the link. It takes us through the video. Uh, and these are news videos. These, these have been around for a while, and obviously they're progressive, so um, they build upon what was said um, in the last video, and we can move up and we can look at more complex operations. Um, they currently go right up to year five and six, um, and we can look at the long visual method here. Multiple. Um, so the flipped classroom, you can use it to deliver your content, you can use it for your pupils more excitingly to deliver content for others. Um, and it doesn't just have to be limited to the classroom. Uh, other principles, first of all, we recorded our parent information session. So if you weren't able to make it, if you're at work or you couldn't get out of the house, you could watch it back online afterwards. And here's a short clip from one of those. So that's how I use the flipped classroom model and I encourage you to try something for yourself. In the next section we're going to look at why. Um, so I think the real power is not when we're making the videos but when the learners are making the videos and you know you can have, it doesn't matter if you've got multiple videos in the same thing because the children are learning the concepts as they're teaching them and I think that can be really powerful. So um, the next bit really is about perception um, which is why I've put this picture up um, because I think often we can look at it from our point of view but I think the next couple of videos just share what, what it's like for a student and what they perceive it as. So the next section is all about why and hopefully the reason why we would do this is all because of the students.
In terms of why, I can only talk about it from my perspective and why, why I chose to do it. I chose to do it in my previous setting because it increased engagement both from the pupils and for me, working with younger children, it increased engagement from parents. For them to have a little eye into the classroom was really powerful and you, okay, you don't get all parents that are interested in what's happening, but even if it's just a small percentage, you know, that can have a real big impact at home because, you know, I think it was the Roundtree Foundation that, that did the survey that show that the impact that a school can have can only be around about 14% in their life, whereas the home impact and the background can be so much more. And I think, you know, that, that's where the real power can come. The, the, bit that, the bit that gets coverage is kind of the, the teachers making videos. And I, I see the value in that, but I see, the, I see for tremendous value in the pupils making the content. I can already see Hindu cremation. Mm -hmm. The activity is currently, I supply a series of objects that they have to talk me through why we're doing what we're doing. Whereas passing the iPad and say, well, look, can you guys go over the corner there? Can you film what you've done? Mm. Let me have a look at it. You can just watch a couple of them back. Maybe it's a class which is, you know, it's some observation to send if you miss anything. Mm. So, already I can see that they're on the I was worried for a minute. I thought they were going to set fire to things. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> 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 it's like, 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 <laughs> um, I suppose the next bit really is the most important bit for, for you sitting here watching because I've shown you how other people have done it but it's, the next bit is how you can do it really um, and I show you four, four different tools that you can use there are hundreds of tools that you can use to screen record and to record and edit things down but these are just four that I, I've used personally um, to make the videos that I've used basically Okay, so I'm just going to show you a few tools that you can use to flip the classroom. The first tool I'm using is actually the one that I'm recording this screen with now. And I haven't shown you how I set this up, but if you've got a Mac computer, you can use QuickTime Player, which comes free with Mac OS X, to screen record your screen. To do this, open QuickTime in the bottom here, and click File, screen recording. I can't select at the moment because I've already pressed it and I'm using it as I talk to you. Um, but you can see that you can also record a movie which uses your webcam 
or you can use audio recording to just record voice. Um, so I press screen recording. On screen recording you can select a certain window or you can select the whole screen like I'm doing now. Um, this saves in a very high quality um, movie format that you can then edit down in iMovie later on. If you're not using a Mac, if you're using a Windows machine or you're using a Mac and you want to add a webcam image, a great website to use is something called screencastomatic.com. You would have seen the digital leaders using this earlier on in my, in my talk this evening. So I'm on screencastomatic.com um, and I've pressed the start recording button at the top here. The first time you do this you do need to install a Java plugin. Um, you just click run and install and that takes probably about five minutes to do um, and then it will load up for the first time. When you're ready to start you just press start recording and this is exactly the point that we're on now. We're at a point where it's told us what size window we'd like. So if you just want to record a very small section, you can do that by dragging across. If you want to record your whole display, you can also do that. Um, I'm actually just going to focus in on a, on a section here. And I'm going to choose to um, include my microphone. I'm also going to choose to include um, my webcam. So I can add my webcam in here, and you can actually see me talking, which is, is obviously good if you want to add that element to your presentation as well. So I can position that webcam just there. Um, and now I can just press record, and hopefully it will say three, two, one, and off we go. And now I am recording my presentation. And actually there's a thing that I want to show you what I record through Screenscast-O-Matic, and that's a tool that um, we looked at a couple of weeks ago in Google Docs that we can use to annotate and highlight what we're doing. So I'll show you, it will all become clear as I show you now. So if I click Create, Drawing, the drawing tool is a fantastic tool within Google Docs that basically gives you a shared whiteboard space. So I'm going to drag this now to the size of my display. And I can then use the scribble pen to put on my notes. So if, just like the example later on, if I wanted to highlight question number four, if it was 25 and Eleven. We could do that, and obviously, if you're using a pen on the interactive whiteboard, you're going to do much better than me at the moment with my um, with my cursor. Um, but you can see how instantly this could be used to share concepts and um, to reinforce ideas. And obviously, because you're recording what else on your screen, you could go off to any website. You could highlight articles. You could pull bits apart. You could also use other people's videos, um, which which is nothing wrong in doing. And to highlight what you're doing really and then as soon as you're ready you just press done and that's going to take you to a preview of your video and I can actually press play on that straight away. Okay, and now I am recording my presentation and actually there's a thing that I want to show you what I record through screens and that's a tool that um, we looked at a couple of weeks ago in Google Docs that we can use to annotate and highlight what we're doing so I'll show you it will all become clear as I show you now so if I click create drawing a drawing tool is a fan. And there you can see my video really. And you would have seen straight away on the right here you've got some options. You can publish this to the screencast matic website, you can publish straight to YouTube, or you can download the video file and then add it to your Google site or blog or <coughs> um, Edmodo or whatever you want to share your content with people. And I just think that's a really exciting tool that you can use. So the screencast o matic there's a quick time recorder. Um, another one um, which you can look at is Screenshot map is um, what I showed a couple of weeks ago in the 30, app, 30 iPad apps in 30 minutes, and let's just remind you of what, what I said then. Starting point, like I said. So that's mobile ACR. The next one is Screenshot. Screenshot is a screen recording tool that allows you to record the whiteboard that you're using. So instantly you can have a different background, so I can choose from library, I can take a picture, so let's choose a picture I've already got. And what I can do here is I can record, I can annotate the work that I'm doing. So I can say, you know, these people are sitting really nicely, well done. Not too sure about what this person's doing here. Um, and I can commentate and I can talk about it. And obviously, this is great. I use this in my class um, for our time to explore concepts that we were doing. So if we were just exploring non multiplication, and we would go through it on here, and I'd press the stop button. 
And it's I can annotate the work that I'm doing so I could say, you know, these people are sitting really nicely, well done. Not too sure about what this person's doing here. Um, and I can commentate and I can talk about it. And obviously, and this is something you've got this video that you can share. And basically, it sends it to a website called screenshot.com. It stores it on there, it then gives you the URL of the link to then share that with other people. And obviously, you can share it through the blog, through the website, um, through a like, node, you, know, you, can, you can do it in whatever way that you are sharing your information in the class. You can also do it for a QR code, which will come on to a minute. Okay, so I've talked about QuickTime if you've got a Mac and Screencast-O-Matic, which works for any web browser. I've also shared with you ScreenChomp on the iPad. The final thing I want to share with you is Screen Recorder, which is available if you have a smart board with the smart software on. Here's an overview of Screen Recorder. This is a screencast on how to use the smart board recorder. First, go to your desktop or wherever you have the smart board recorder shortcut. Double-click it. It might be an assistant tray. This brings up the Smart Board Recorder Control Panel. There are three main controls, record, pause, and stop. <coughs> pause is nice if you lose track of what you're trying to say. Stop is when you're done and you want to save the file. When you choose to record, there are two options. There's record the desktop, record the area. Recommend recording desktop when you have a lower resolution on your monitor, like 800 by 600, for example. That way, the size of your file, your video file, won't be so large that you can't do it. You can also choose record area. This is the option I'm going to demonstrate now. So choose record area. This brings up a dialogue where I'm drawing a box over whatever it is I'm going to record. Generally speaking, you want to shoot with a 4 four by 3 ratio. I draw the box. It begins recording. I'm now going to move my control panel out of the way. Ideally, the, the user would never see that. Today, for the demonstration, I'm going to show people how to use Google Image Search with Advanced Search. Click on the advanced preferences. Let's say I'm looking for a pit cow picture that is very, very large. This will ignore files below a certain threshold. So now I found some cows. Here it looks like a beautiful cow. If I look at this closely, you can see, we can zoom right in, and see what a very large cow it is. So now we're getting a very large resolution cow. Search done. I'm done with my screencast. I go back to my smart board recorder control panel, press stop. This will bring up a dialog box where I can save the file. I'm going to go to the default name. Now I also get a choice that will automatically let me preview it, which is very nice. This will bring up an AVI, depending on your or a move, depending on your system and your preferences. So I can see my movie's box, it begins recording. I'm now, I'm now going, going to move my, my control. control. We have a box within a box log. But anyway, it's working. Very nice. Thank you for watching my screencast. So as you can see, there are a number of tools there that you can use to flip your classroom. Remember, it's not about the tool. There are hundreds of different tools out there to use to record your screen. You can also use a video camera uh, or digital camera to just take stills. There's so many ways that this can be done. Um, and I'd encourage you all just to give it a go and see the difference it can really make to learning in your classroom. Okay, so just to finish, um, I've got one example of Someone that's been using a flip classroom model for a while and sh is sharing five things that they wish they'd known beforehand. Um, and this is the final video. Thank you all for listening. I know it's been a long one tonight, but um, hopefully there's something you can take away that's, um, that's useful. Hi, John Sowash here. And just a follow up to my previous post on the flipped classroom. When I implemented this into uh, my classroom, I was surprised by a few things and to help educators uh, considering uh, integrating the flipped classroom into their uh, class, um, here are the five top things that I wish I had known uh, when I started out with the flipped classroom. The first one is that it takes a lot more time than you would think to record uh, your lectures. You might say, well, I've got all my PowerPoints ready to go. I deliver them all the time. This will be easy. Well, not the case. It takes a lot of time to produce your um, lectures in a, a reproducible format, post them to YouTube or to iTunes, and make sure all the links are working and um, the handouts uh, match up with the uh, presentations. So don't underestimate how much time it actually does take to uh, put those together. Secondly, um, when I started, I was uh, a little... 
um, optimistic, I guess you'd say, and I say, oh, I'm only going to use uh, things that I um, make. Um, I'm only going to record my own lectures. I'm not going to reuse anybody else's uh, material. And while that was a nice uh, uh, thought, it's just way too difficult to record and uh, create everything from scratch. So I would encourage you to research what is available. There's lots of quality content available. Look at YouTube, TeacherTube, Vimeo, see what other uh, video uh, resources are available, and certainly uh, slide decks from other people, handouts, uh, reuse those as much as you can. Um, it'll save you a lot of time um, and allow you to focus on helping your students, not just creating material. Thirdly, um, don't be surprised if your students uh, don't like this. Um, to be honest with you, sitting through a lecture is easy. Students uh, like to do it. It's comfortable. It uh, requires very little effort on their part. And so um, uh, when you change things and you actually require them to work, and when they come to class, they have to participate and really work hard, um, they might uh, push back a little bit against the flipped classroom method. Do not take this as a negative necessarily. Anytime growth occurs, um, it's hard. And so uh, I think this is just a change from the norm, um, and those uh, negatives may not necessarily um, be all negative. Fourthly, um, keep your options open. Don't uh, do what I did and say, okay, we're only doing the flipped classroom. I am totally getting rid of the old way of doing things. Um, pick a couple of lessons and start there. Don't try to uh, rearrange your entire um, class for the entire year. That's just going to be way too much. Um, start small, pick a couple of lessons, work at them, make them really good, and then each year after that, continue to improve and then add additional lessons and units into the flipped classroom method. Trying to do it all at once will end up uh, just making you frustrated, your t uh, students frustrated, um, it's just a, a lot to bite off at one time. Finally, and this is something I've mentioned uh, a few times before um, in my other posts, uh, make sure you have a plan for the extra class time that is now available since you're not lecturing um, in class. This is one of the areas in which I think I um, uh, failed the most. I spent all my time creating those lectures and um, putting them together, and I did not spend enough time planning out the activities that I was going to do with my newly liberated class time. Make sure that these activities are hands-on, that they are um, inquiry-based, they're requiring students to uh, use higher order thinking skills, because that's really the whole point of the flipped classroom, to um, move uh, away from rote um, data dump kind of uh, activities to activities that require students to think um, and to learn on their own. So those are five things that I wish I would have known uh, when I started the flipped classroom. I hope that you'll learn from my mistakes and my errors and that uh, as you integrate the flipped classroom into your um, class that you'll have a very positive experience.